you're now ready to screen the patient. You can print out our protocol and see all of our inclusion and exclusion criteria. But for now, you have a patient post V-fib arrest. He's got a pulse. He's got good vital signs. So he's a good candidate for induced hypothermia. All right, we'll now perform a brief neurologic exam. Let's just confirm the findings. Yep, the patient's a good hypothermia candidate. All right, next step, you got to get your cooling blankets. They're in the hypothermia draw. Grab two of those, come back to your patient. All right, so we have our blankets here. Manufacturer recommends one above and below the patient with nothing in between them and the blankets. They're made to touch the skin directly. Put the spouts by the feet for easy access. There you go. That's the manufacturer's setup for the blankets. But I actually like to uh, make a patient burrito. This gets more skin uh, the blanket contact. I think it's a little neater. It's easier to manage the patient. So you just wrap one around the torso nice and tight and one around the upper portion of the legs. This kind of duplicates the tight wrap blanket systems that cost more. There you go. All right, you're gonna grab the machine that's actually set aside for post-arrest induced hypothermia. It has instructions on the machine. You can't really screw it up. It's all. The, the reservoir right here, what you do is you look in there uh, and you see if the water is lapping up at the top of that uh, little grill there. You should actually see a puddle of water. If you don't, you just keep filling it until you do. So let, let's, let's show that. We just have a sterile bottle of water here. You keep filling it until you have water lapping. Just dump the whole thing in. Now you can actually see we have a puddle of water showing at the bottom of that reservoir. That's what you need. All right, we're now going to hook both of our blankets to the same blanket control machine. And it's easy. You just grab the connectors and you match up the colors. So we're going to take the black one and put it to a black. White one, put it to a white. And then we'll do the same thing with the connectors on the other blanket. Black to black and white to white. You can see now two blankets hooked up to the same machine. We're now going to get our temperature probe, place it in the esophagus, and hook it up to the machine. It's found in the same draw we got the blankets from. All right, here it is, the steriprobe. It could be placed either esophageally or rectally. Now, there are no sonometer markings on this, so you actually have to measure it out against the patient. What you actually want is it to sit right behind the heart. So you find the xiphoid process. There you go. And it's about four centimeters above the xiphoid. Doesn't have to be exact. All right, so here's our optimal place on the chest. So all we do 
is we measure from that point out to either the patient's lips or out of their nose. Okay. So let's demonstrate that. that. Yep, just. Okay. Okay. So here's, <laughs> so if we wait, it's right here. Yeah. Okay. So about four centimeters up. We'll Perfect, that's great. Right here. And then measure that up against his body. Yep. And we'll go oral, so would you guys smile and I'm worried. All right, and that's how deep we'll place it. We'll just mark that off with a little piece of tape and that's how deep we'll go. All right, machine, and it actually has just a telephone cord ending to it. And there's the temp probe wire. And the end. So plug that in. All right, so now we have both blankets and the temperature probe hooked up to the machine. Now remember, the instructions are on the front of the machine. And we have the do not use buttons. Don't use those. Don't be tempted to push it just because it says not to. We're not doing that. All right, so there's the machine. All right, step one, you're gonna turn the machine on. The power button is right here. Next, make sure the machine is set to Celsius. We're using the metric system. That means you hit this switch right there and you push it down. Fahrenheit, Celsius. All right, you come up to the top of the machine. The first thing you do is you go to the temp set button. And you press that. And you're gonna set the temp to 33. Maybe I'll just go for my back, is it okay for you? All right, so 33 degrees Celsius is your temp set. The only other thing you need to do is press this auto control button. And now you are set because this machine is now going to show you the patient's temp, 36.2 right now. It has your set point, and if the patient's too warm, it'll cool them. If the patient's too cool, it'll warm them. You don't have to touch anything. Now, there is a monitor only button here. That's if you just wanted to monitor the patient's temp without the blankets working, you never need to press that button. The other button never to press is this one. We have a do not use sticker on it. And what that does is it's a manual button. It will make the blankets go to 33. That will heat your patient, that's a bad idea. Set your temp as step number one to 33. And then set your auto control button. That's all you have to do. As long as the reservoir is full with a puddle on the bottom, there is nothing else you need to do. The instructions are on the machine. Please don't screw it up. All right, next we need our ice saline. We have it in the trauma room, medication fridge. Bottom shelf is all ice saline. It's refrigerator temperature. It's about 40 degrees. This, this one actually, 36 degrees, about 36 degrees Fahrenheit, anywhere between 35 and 40 is your med fridge temp. The entire bottom shelf, ice saline, we have 500 cc bags. Just grab one of those and take it to your patient. All right, you have your ice saline bag, 500 cc's. Now we're gonna put this in under pressure. We're gonna use a pressure bag. And the thing is, all of these bags have air on the top. If you pressure bag in air, your patients do not like it. They do not need an air embolism on top of their cardiac arrest. All right, so you take your bag. All right, and you spike the bag. You take your spike out and you just push out all the air and then re-spike it. And Weight to 300 millimeters of mercury and attach it to our patient, open it up, and we're running that whole 500 cc's. Alternatively, you could use the level one device, in which case you're just gonna use the pressure bags. Do not put it through the heating circuit of the level one. That will not help your patients induce hypothermia.
Now, shivering's a big problem. You're gonna lose all of your hypothermic effect if the patient's metabolism is going up from the shivering. So, there's actually four stages of shivering described by the folks at Columbia, Stefan Mayer's group. The first stage is no shivering at all, and, and that's a good place to be. The second stage is you might not even see the shivering, but if you feel their facial muscles, if you feel their shoulders underneath your fingers, you might feel shivering. Or on the EKG, you might see the little baseline perturbation. Now, uh, a shivering scale of two will actually be intermittent shivering of the extremities and the, uh, the torso, and then stage three is going to be generalized shivering of the entire body that's going on constantly. All right, here's the machine once we got the patient down to goal temp. Right now they're 33.7. They'll keep drifting down to 33. Medicine, if you have a residency and you want a great guy, <laughs> here's your man. All right, thank you so much, Rebecca. Do you mind if we distribute this video to the hospitals around New York City? No, hi, Sydney. All right.